Hello, this is Ron Paul with your weekly update for November 29th. As of November 7th, the total U.S. and public debt outstanding reached an astonishing $13.7 trillion. This means that although Congress just raised the debt limit to $14.3 trillion back in February, the new Congress will face another debt ceiling vote almost immediately next year. Otherwise, the Treasury will not be able to continue issuing debt to fund government operations. The upcoming vote will provide an interesting litmus test for the new Republican congressional majority, especially those new members closely identified with Tea Party voters. The debt ceiling law, passed in 1917, enables Congress to place a statutory cap on the total amount of government debt rather than having to approve each individual Treasury bond offering. It also, however, forces Congress into an open and presumably somewhat shameful vote to approve more borrowing. If the new Congress gives in to establishment pressure and media alarmism about shutting down the government by voting to increase the debt ceiling once again, you will know that the status quo has prevailed. You will know that Congress, despite the rhetoric of the midterm elections, is doing business as usual. You will know that the simple notion of balancing the budget by limiting federal spending to federal revenue remains a shallow and laughable campaign platitude. Of course, congressional leaders, now Republicans, will tell America that they plan on balancing the budget soon, but they just need some time. After all, we have to keep the government open, they claim. We can't have a so-called emergency shutdown of vital government services, but somehow Congress always finds money for emergency spending in the form of supplemental appropriation bills for TARP bailouts, troop surges, and the like. Why is there never an emergency that justifies less spending? Surely we are facing an emergency debt spiral as evidenced by the Federal Reserve's recent commitment to buy another round of Treasury debt. It's now quite obvious that the U.S. government plans to inflate its way out of debt and the world is fleeing our dollar in response. Just seven years ago, Congress raised the debt ceiling to $6.4 trillion, which means the federal government had doubled its indebtedness in less than a decade. Annual deficits for 2011 and beyond are projected to be at least $1 trillion. By contrast, the entire federal debt amassed from the founding of our nations until President Reagan took office a period of roughly 200 years was less than $1 trillion. So it's no exaggeration to state that federal debt is growing exponentially. I have two simple proposals when the new Congress convenes in January. First, refuse to raise the debt limit. Find a way, month by month, for Congress to spend only what the Treasury raises in revenues. Second, start over from scratch with the 13 appropriations bill that fund the federal government. Reject any talk of baseline budgets or discretionary spending. It is all discretionary, and members of both parties should vote against any 2012 appropriation bill that is not at least 10% smaller in nominal dollars than its 2011 counterpart. A motivated Congress could begin to slow the tide of debt by taking the simple steps of cutting federal spending by 10% across the board for the next few years. Let's hope it does not take the complete collapse of the U.S. dollar to provide this motivation. Thanks for calling. A new update is placed on this number, 888-322-1414, every Monday morning. The written text can be found on my website, www.house.gov, paul, under the heading Texas Straight Talk. Thanks for calling.